My name is Badr Asi. I'm uh, a fourth year electrical engineer at UC Riverside. My name is Dwight. Uh, I'm a fourth year electrical engineer at UCR. My name is Catherine Lai. I'm a fourth year electrical engineer and I was the lead design engineer for this project. I'm also a fourth year electrical engineering student at UCR. I was in charge of mostly the hardware monitoring, making sure there's you know that data communication between the servos and our main processor. I personally, I've I found that whenever I watched like those videos on Facebook about dogs in the wheelchairs, I was like, oh man, I really wish they could just like run again, you know, like it would look so awesome if they could just run and feel like they they were uh, you know flying in the field or whatever. It would, it would be really cool. So that, that's kind of what got me really into this. And I was like, I really want to see that happen. For this project, we would take advantage of, I guess, this new form of manufacturing that recently came up, you know, involving 3D printing, additive manufacturing, right? Uh, it's very customer based um, and it's really versatile. So uh, we collectively kind of agreed that we wanted to go with 3D printing from the get go, right? It would be the easiest method to to approach this uh, solution. So it was all 3D printed. Um, we started off with a uh, just a simple model from our school. Uh, we don't have a really powerful printer at our school. It's just kind of like a get something, right? Get something out there. Mm -hmm. So we got that and uh, we put our servo motors in there just to test uh, with our other components. Um, to see how it would work, what it would look like, um, how easily it was to program, uh, what challenges we might face with the full build. Um, but it was really mainly just 3D printing. Um, that was our, our basic form of like prototyping with this project. Well, essentially there's like uh, four main components when it comes to this project. There is the remote server app where uh, the user can see the uh, inputs and outputs that are displayed from the, uh, the dog. So essentially the prosthetic, it would be moving at a certain like velocity. So the user can see that and it's associated to the time steps so you can see when the movement uh, occurred. Uh, there's also the prosthetic legs themselves that were designed by Kat. Um, that were 3D printed, uh, they're, and they're powered by the servos that we purchased for this project. Um, actuators were placed uh, in our model to represent the front legs so that uh, the prosthetic legs will only move in response to how the front legs move. That way we can best imitate uh, natural movement in a dog. Um, because like when you look at different gates with dogs, they they follow a very similar pattern of, uh, um, let's say like their front right leg move and their back right leg move, and then the left, front left leg moves, back left leg moves, and it follows a similar pattern as such. So we took that to our advantage, and we had our accelerometers be uh, the main instigator when it comes to like movement. So uh, how fast they move or how far they travel, the prosthetic leg would imitate that movement, and that's how movement would be initiated. The whole model was based off to be worked with Eagle specifically, just for the purpose of like prototyping. We thought it was a good size, uh, resource-wise. Like we didn't have to put too much. Uh, we didn't have to make anything too big or grand. Like obviously, if we chose like a golden retriever, that's maybe a little bit impractical. So a beagle was a perfect size in terms of limb, limbs length. Like we can clearly see how the legs work, while also it's a manageable size on our end to work with. The main challenge, honestly, was was getting up to speed in such a short amount of time. We had to learn quite a bit um, before even approaching like a prototype. Um, so that was kind of like a race against time the whole time. Um, other than that, like we obviously COVID was was a big issue. Um, you know, really limited not only just working together, but buying our parts. Right with the whole manufacturing crisis in China, um, it was really difficult to to kind of get past that. Luckily, we had some parts laying around sometimes that would work. Um, and, and at least the prototyping and experimental stages, but that was also another big issue. The other issue obviously was time, you know, this is a 10 week, uh, course, and then we have a two week break and another 10 week, uh, quarter. Um, it was, you know, a two quarter project. So we really had to make sure that when we wanted to get something done, the result would be reflective of what our idea and goal was. Hmm. Um, and then the final issue, which is always an issue, money, right? Aside from time, you know, you can't have time issue without money issue, right? Um, most of it came out of pocket. You know, the school um, could only offer so much uh, assistance, especially with the, the, the ongoing crisis. So yeah, it was, it was also another issue with money, which kind of limited us to how big we could make it, what servos we could buy. Primarily the servo motor was overheating. There was just too much plastic around it, not enough ventilation. So then it was working really hard and not resting enough. So uh, we kind of lost one there, but it was also uh, another issue was was actually, as you mentioned, Karen, um, the 
uh, how the parts fit together, right? Um, that's that's a really big issue that we had, um, and that had we had more time, we would have been able to fix with a redesign or uh, an improvement in that field. We mainly chose PLA because you know it was 3D printing material, and that it was probably the cheapest one and also not toxic like ABS. It worked very well for what we were designing. I think like if we had more money, we had more funding um, to increase the quality of all of our materials and parts. Um, definitely going with a more temperature resistant material would be better. But yeah, for like what we were able to do for with our restrictions, I think the PLA worked very well. So we initially actually chose like a regular forward knee that a human would have. Mm. Um, since we were mainly focusing on like just making the robotic prosthetic walk, so we would need kind of more force rather than maneuverability. Um, but when we actually got into the testing, we found out that especially since we didn't have like an actual dog to test this on and we didn't that weight keeping the robotic prosthetic down. Um, the robotic prosthetic itself, its walk was very jumpy. It would lift up the hip while walking forward. So that was when we decided to switch to the inverted knee style and that like maintained a stable hip. It wasn't uh, moving like all over the place. It was a lot more stable and steady. So we never made a free joint design. Um, the free joint was, you know, just purely based on the anatomy of a real dog. I uh, actually we went with a two joint design just to simplify any uh, torque, force, velocity, and acceleration calculations that we made uh, when we were trying to decide which servos we would buy. Well, I would say that there's definitely like a lot of adaptive per or potential with this project. Uh, like you said, one of the biggest things would be scaling wise, obviously different dogs have much different dimensions with them. Um, but an even bigger issue would be the training data that is required to uh, implement movement because um, different dogs may have different strides, how far they can move, how fast they typically move. Their gait styles may be slightly different as well. So the amount of training data needed is very specific based on uh, dog breed and uh, aspects like that. And if you were to even consider like, you know, species outside of dogs, that's even more like differences of how they move, how they walk, um, everything like that. So big, definitely like dimension wise, that is one really big obstacle, but even bigger will be just training the whole set. We only pretty much knew each other as friends prior to this project. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so glad I got to work with, with everyone here because um, I got to see really what we could all do together, right? Well, there are different experiences and skills and, and that really, you know, brought it all together for me. That was that was the, the icing on the cake of, at the end of the day. When we were reaching out to Ray CD, when we actually got like a response and that was like, whoa, <laughs> like, like we were we were here like in terms of like of like all projects and everything. But when we heard about that, it was such a motivating like um, a factor when it came to working on this project because the, the fact, especially during like this crisis situation, the fact that we were still able to never can reach out and work with the company was such like it's such a cool thing and such a great opportunity to have so yeah we really like we really do appreciate this partnership that we're having of course no seriously thank you guys as well um it has been fantastic for us to be part of the project um i think it's been awesome you guys clearly work together very well um so i think it's been a, a rousing success all around